In this video, what I'd like to do is show you how to complete the technical section for a work order. So consider this for a moment. Consider that your technician has just finished talking to the customer at the front door. He's getting ready to do an installation at this location, and he wants to do a host of different kinds of things before he gets up on the roof. One, he probably would like to at least pre-configure the equipment that's going on the roof so when he plugs it in and runs it into the computer, it's already set up so that the the speeds are set properly in the network so he can get up and he, when he finally plugs it in, he can do some baseline analysis and then he can just go forward and complete the work order. So I'm just going to randomly kind of find a, see if we can find a new installation work order over here someplace. And we're going to just, I'm just going to load them all up and we'll just see what we can find over here in the way of a work order. And just take a second, here we go. And let's just, so, let's just see if we can find some open work orders. So here's a whole bunch of open work orders, and here's, for example, here's a Mr. Cameron Crum. Let's just go down and look and see if there's anybody that, uh, here's Patrick Stewart. Okay, so we got a Patrick Stewart. I'm going to click on Patrick Stewart, and let's say that uh, our technician is now standing in the address or in the on the driveway of Mr. Patrick Stewart, and he's using this application as if it were a as if it were off his iPhone. So he's opened up, he's pulled up the website on his iPhone, and this is what he sees. So we are going to look at, this is a, this is a, new, uh, this is a new installation work order. The contact section has already been completed, as you can see. All the information is in there. The billing section is also complete. So you can see that all the address information and so forth, he probably is not going to receive all of that. Maybe just an email statement. We'll get rid of that. We'll make it an email statement. So we're just doing a basic general review. We're going to go ahead and prorate this one as well. The guy doesn't have a username and a password. We ought to give him one of those since we're since we're here. I don't think I spelled that right, but I don't know that it really matters all that much. And let's see if he's got a payment type option. As you remember, you can select various different payment type options. But, uh, okay, so now we finally go back and we can look at plans. He's going to have a residential basic service plan. He has no promotions and he's not getting any special monthly or, you know, recurring discount. So now I'm standing in the, in the guy's driveway. I want, to I want to configure the equipment so that when I do, in fact, finish the installation up on the roof, that uh, it's already ready to go. I plug it in and it's already feeding the right service parameters to the customer's computer. So what I'll do is, once again, as you know, we can select a variety of different technologies here, but in this case, it's going to be a wireless installation. The, the company, the affiliation company, in this case, is going to be the Demco company. Uh, this is going to be off of the Rendon site. Uh, it's going to be coming off of this particular sector. In fact, let's switch the sectors. It's going to be coming off of DE05. DE05, it already uh, automatically identifies what the router IP address is. And then, uh, as can be expected, you can actually select an IP address out of the dropdown for the CPE IP. So anything that's currently available can be selected from this location. So I'll just pick the top one in, in the list, and that's 10.0.2.5. I can select that knowing full well that it's not going to be conflicting with anybody else in the network because it manages and monitors to make sure that that's not going to happen. If I want to pick a static IP address, I can also find, I believe there are static IP addresses on this one. Yes, there are. So I'll just go down here and I'll just pick a static IP address. Let's start at about 31. Okay, so I'll select an IP address. If you want to change the subnet, you're capable of doing that. If you want to identify what the gateway is, you can do that as well. In this case, it's 216.171.240.1. Uh, okay, and then if you have a username and password for doing PPPoE type authentication, you can identify what those are here. Also, you can pick the piece of equipment that you just took out of your truck and identify which particular device that is. We'll just identify that as being this device here. It shows the MAC address. I can compare the MAC address to the equipment. ID numbers that are on the side of the box. So I'll just go ahead and select that. Also, if the terminating device, the terminating MAC and IP address are actually going to be assigned inside the house on either a customer owned or, an, uh, or a router that you're going to sell the customer, you can select that at this point. So if it's from inventory, you can select it from inventory. If it's customer owned, you can select customer owned 
And then what it will ask you to do is put in the customer's MAC address at that location. Notice, of course, that I have the option now to pre-provision the piece of equipment onto the network. The piece of equipment is sitting on the driveway, and I'm, I'm getting ready to get on the roof, but I'm going to pre-provision that equipment so that when I actually run the cables downstairs, pull the cable in, put it into the POE, and then lock it into the computer, that the computer already has the parameter settings from the service plan that's been identified. It knows what access point it's going to go to. It knows what IP address it's going to be pulling. And the radius server or however you're managing authentication knows what the MAC address of the device is. So you load it up, you turn it on, and it's automatically operational for you at that point. So now you can now you can climb up on the roof, and you can complete the uh, complete the installation, and then come down and complete it from that point forward. All right. Well, thank you so much. Bye.